stepping into the color verse here. That sounds like an alternate reality, right? A place where people can shoot rainbows from their fingertips. Personally, I wouldn't mind if a superhero appeared right now to whip this studio into shape, because I'm pretty sure organization is a superpower. I mean, flying would be cool, sure, but you'd still have to come back to stacks of dirty dishes and half-completed projects. Hi, I'm Irene. That was my random thought for the day. Kidding. I'm just getting warmed up. But first, a rundown of what's happening here. It's demonstration time for a couple of items that were shown in the previous video. Specifically, a bottle of Colorverse ink, Chung Cho, from the Minwa series, and the Schaefer Friends of Winter fountain pen in the design Pine. As far as I know, this is one in a series of three, the others being Plum and Bamboo. This pen actually belongs to producer Mike, and I readily admit to having a case of pen envy. Subjectively speaking, it's possibly the most elegant pen I've handled. Style-wise, I understand it's the same as the Schaefer 100 model, just with tree branch decorative dressing. That's the obvious stuff. Less obvious, because it's something you can only feel for yourself, is the balance. There's just enough weight, and it's well distributed even with the cap posted. And that's surprising because more often than not, I'll forego posting due to top heaviness. But that's not the case here. This one has a fine nib and there is a bit of feedback, but it's the pleasant rather than scratchy sort. Also, I want to point out that picking it up after a couple of weeks of capped disuse it worked right away. No issues. So that cap's got a good seal. This pen was purchased through PenSavings.com for around $20, and an ink converter was included in the box. Yeah, a pretty sweet deal, in my opinion. The point is, a gal could be forgiven for sneaking around, borrowing it, writing a voiceover, then carefully putting it back in the wee hours of the morning. Just saying. But back to random thoughts. So one of the things I watch on YouTube is house tours. My interest in floor plans has been mentioned several times here. So yeah, whether it's new construction or historical renovations, it's all fascinating. The thing is, there are few things that irk me as much as a poorly done house tour. The most egregious offense is rushing through it. Seriously, why bother if you aren't going to linger and give me enough time to picture myself in 1. the family room watching Hulu with my feet up, 2. the kitchen clanging pots and pans and brewing a pot of coffee, and 3. the bathroom color-coordinating towels and using up an entire can of Citrus Bliss air freshener. I once witnessed a vlogger completely forget about the pantry, arguably the most vital room in a house. I mean, how am I supposed to assess potential food security issues unless you show me every corner of that closet, preferably with accurately calculated square footage? Go ahead, call me a home tour nerd, because in my opinion, the quality of any home tour is directly tied to how many cupboards are opened. On a serious note, food security, or the lack of it, is a real thing, and something that many people strive for all of their lives. I remember watching a documentary about Dieter Dangler and his escape from a prisoner of war camp in Laos. That was during the Vietnam War. Years later, while living in California, Dieter showed the filmmaker his hidden stash of food staples beneath the floor of his pantry. 
This was in addition to an already fully stocked kitchen. He admitted he'd likely never use it all up, but after suffering severe deprivation, he just slept better knowing it was there. The film is Little Dieter Needs to Fly. It's from 1997 and was made by Werner Herzog. Actually, Werner went on to film a dramatized version of Dieter's story in 2006, titled Rescue Dawn, starring Christian Bale. The writing sample and accompanying sketch are also food-related. Sage is a herb that's originally from the Mediterranean, and it's often used in Italian cooking. I'm only pointing that out because I talked about Italian food in a recent video. That's what's called a callback. Not a throwback, mind, but a callback. (sighs) Words. That reminds me. Merriam-Webster posted some tweets the other day that basically legitimize the use of irregardless. Well, I think that's irresponsible. What's next? Supposedly, Broughton, Basgetti? That last is especially annoying because Google attempted to correct my spelling while asking, Did you mean Basgetti with an H? This Chung Cho is a fabulous shade of deep teal. I'd say it partners well with the fine nib on Schaefer's Friends of Winter Fountain Pen. That was Claire Fontaine's Triumph paper, by the way. I also tested it on Tomoe River and Midori MD papers using a Kakimori brass nib. Okay, some of my cranky came out earlier when I went off on words. Maybe some of Otto rubbed off on me. That's right, I watched A Man Called Otto the other night. Yes, I cried. But I also cried at Kung Fu Panda. Flashback. Not throwback, mind, but flashback to 1989, when I sat in a cinema bawling buckets during glory. Let's just say, the floodgates opened and they haven't been the same since. The point is, if you toss in a lost dog, a missed birthday, or a dropped plate... I'll be reaching for the tissues. That said, a man called Otto had pretty heavy stuff, including illness, death, depression, elder abuse, and attempted suicide. Unfortunately, a couple of moments came across as awkwardly maudlin, and the real estate agent with the nefarious agenda? It was already obvious he was bad news. There was no need for the loud car radio announcing him. On the flip side, I liked the messages in the story, and I loved Otto's neighbor, Marisol. Yeah, it was a downer at times, but all in all, there were enough humorous and heartwarming moments to make me glad I watched it. Well, I guess I'd better wrap things up. Gotta get this pen back into producer Mike's pen case. I don't feel like dealing with his pen security anxiety. Sure, I can use them whenever I want to, but the day I borrow one is the day he wants to use that exact pen. Plus, then I have to refill it. It's like borrowing a car. By the way, included in the Colorverse box was a swatch card showing all four inks in the Minois series. It looks like they have a rich yellow, this deep teal, a dark red, and a grayish green. I'm happy to share this pen and ink session with you. It worked out fine. No superpowers required. Until next time, remember, no matter how strong the compulsion, do not open all the cupboards when visiting a friend's house. Apparently, that's frowned upon. And stay inky, my friends.